Let's take a look at the physical construction of the potentiometer, see it applied as a rotation sensor, and then interface it to an analog input. This is the potentiometer that's included in the MyRio starter kit. It's a three terminal device, and it's probably best understood by first looking at the symbol. The symbol shows a fixed valued resistance between two terminals. These are the two outer terminals of the potentiometer in the picture. And then we have a movable contact that serves as the third terminal in between the first two. Looking at the insides of the potentiometer, we would see a circular ring of carbon or carbon-like material with the two terminals appearing on either side of the potentiometer. So this is that fixed resistance. Then the center terminal corresponds to a movable contact and this movable contact is attached at one side to our third terminal and on the other is in contact with the carbon ring. Now one of the resistances that's formed here is R1 and the other resistance is R2. In a sense we have two resistors that vary at the same time. We can then view the potentiometer as a collection of two resistors, R1 and R2, wired as shown. Now the fixed resistance R, this is the way potentiometers are specified, is the same thing as the sum of those two individual resistances, R1 and R2. Now let me rotate this movable contact fully counterclockwise to its limit. I'll keep track of that position as lambda equals zero. Well, this resistance R1 is zero. There's no carbon material in between the two contacts. R2 then must be the same thing as the fixed valued resistance because we traverse the full length of the carbon material. When lambda is 0.5, or when the wiper is at the midpoint position, then R1 is equal to the fixed resistance R divided by two, and R2 is the same value just due to the symmetry of the situation. We could also at this point start to see that looks like the resistance is lambda times r because at this point when lambda equals one in the fully clockwise position, r1 now becomes r and r2 becomes zero. So let's be more specific about where lambda enters in. Turns out that R1 is lambda times R, and R2, which goes in the opposite direction, is one minus lambda times R. This way, as you vary the wiper from zero to one, you can see how the two resistances R1 and R2 respond accordingly. Now let's investigate how we can use the potentiometer as a variable resistor. There's really two ways that this is typically done. I'll start out with the potentiometer symbol. We can either use one pair of terminals, say this pair, or we could use the other pair of terminals. Either way works fine. You get a variable resistance that way. Another technique that's often employed is to simply connect the wiper terminal to either end that is shorting the unused terminal, and then you treat the two remaining terminals as the variable resistance. All right, let's see how we can apply the potentiometer as a rotation sensor. In this application, we would like an output voltage that's proportional to the rotation angle. Begin with the potentiometer symbol again. Connect either end terminal to our power supply, ground and VDD. And then we take the center terminal connected to the wiper and use that as the source for the analog input. Now we really have two design considerations. First, we would like to choose a potentiometer value to minimize power consumption but we also need to be aware of resistive loading effects. Let me show you what I mean by that. If we consider the current that flows from VDD on its way down to ground, 
that current is VDD divided by R. This is assuming that nothing is connected to the terminal called VS. Now the power is the product of voltage and current. That would give us the supply voltage squared divided by R. From this we see that it would be better to have resistance as high as possible. That will minimize the amount of power required by the potentiometer. However, we also need to be aware of resistive loading effects. Let me show you what I mean by that. When the potentiometer output is connected to something, such as the analog input, there is going to be a finite loading resistance associated with that. I'll call that R sub L. The potentiometer resistors form a voltage divider. I have the expression for Vs listed here. And then I'm plotting the potentiometer output Vs as a function of the wiper position in percent. Now for VDD equals 5 volts, we have a range of 0 to 5 volts for our rotation sensor. Vs is the same thing as what's called V out in the plot, by the way. Now I'm looking at various values of R sub L. This red trace on the bottom results from choosing a load resistance that is 100 times smaller than the resistance of the potentiometer. You'll notice we get a very nonlinear looking output. When the load resistance is 10 times higher than the potentiometer value, the output is almost completely, completely linear. That's a much more desirable situation if we're looking for output voltage proportional to rotation angle. That means to avoid a nonlinear output, we need to ensure that the load resistance approaches the ideal case of looking like an open circuit, and we need to avoid the cases where the load resistance is too low. So generally we want the load resistance to be much higher than the value of the potentiometer resistance. Now we have two analog input options on my Rio. On the MXP side, that is connectors A and B, the load resistance is approximately one mega ohm. That is, we want to choose our potentiometer resistance to be in the 10K to 100K range. On the MSP connector or C connector, we have a differential input on the analog input. It has very high load resistance on the order of about 4,000 mega ohms.